Hello and welcome back. Uh, today we are going to be working on Gavot by F.J. Gossick. Um, fun little piece starting to get into like full length with repeats and a whole bunch of fun stuff. Um, one thing before we get started, the videos are now going to be arranged into a course format. Um, they'll still be free, but uh, check the link in the description below and they'll, uh, they'll be all set up and squared away there. So, um, Looking at this, we've got some things to keep in mind at the beginning. Uh, we are in cut time. Um, we are Allegretto, so about 100, uh, I believe it's like 90 to 100 BPM. Um, we have a number of repeats. Uh, end of the second line, we have a repeat. Um, we have a fine at the end of the fourth line. We have a repeat at the end of the sixth line. Then we have a repeat at the end of the... Um, at the end of the entire piece. And then underneath, we also have a Dice Alfine, uh, De Capo Alfine, basically go back to the beginning. So, looking at this, the quick breakdown, and we'll get into this a little bit later, um, is measures one through eight, play them once, repeat back to the beginning, continue through. Measures nine through 16, um, only played once this time through, then you continue on. Then measures 17 through 24 are played twice. Measures 25 through the end are played twice. And at the end of the second time, you go back to the very top of the piece. De Capo return to Alf, uh, or De Capo return to the top of Alfine until the, the Fine. Um, which in this case isn't play through the entire thing one more time. It's play to the Fine, which was mentioned at the end of the fourth line at measure six, or end of measure 16. Um, so what this was, um, was a time and parchment saving measure originally, um, for, uh, for, for musicians. And so when this was being written, um, when Bach was alive and writing and doing these kind of things, um, getting parchment, getting paper, getting stuff to write on and write with was very expensive. And so if you needed to write a whole bunch of music for a whole bunch of people, you wanted to do as, you wanted to write as little as possible to be able to A, get it out as quickly as you could, and B, um, not use a bunch of expensive materials. So if you look at this, um, we've got a grand total of 29, 30, 31, 32, 32 measures as written. As played, we're sitting at well over double that uh, because there's well, there's eight, there's sixteen, there's twenty four. Um, I am trying to math mentally. Twenty four. There's forty. Um, fifty six. 72. So there's 72 measures that are actually played here, and only 30, was it 32 of them as written. Um, so they used these kind of signposts, guideposts, if you will, uh, kind of like street signs, to give you a direction on where you needed to go next and what you needed to do next. Um, so what I usually do is I put big old brackets, kind of like parentheses, um, around where those repeat signs are. Um, so that when I get to the end of one line and I need to jump back to somewhere else, I know exactly what to look for because it's a big old scream and mark on my page. Um, we know the repeat signs. We, we have run into those. Um, the De Capo al Fine, uh, there's also a De Capo al Signo, um, which is return to the... Uh, well, there's De Capo El Signo and uh, De Signo El Fine. So there's a, there's a whole bunch of different things telling you to do different deals. Usually it's DC or DS. Um, and it gives you a, you are here, go back to here, and then play to this chunk and do different things. Um, so in this case, uh, we've got basically, it's, it's a rather simple setup with eight bar phrases that are either repeated immediately or repeated later down in the uh, uh, in the piece. 
So that's going to be a big deal. Um, we also have, if you look in the second measure, there's a really weird little tiny note. Uh, it's reading as an eighth note with a slash through the stem and the flag. Um, that is a grace note. That one is not technically metered, but you just kind of stuff it in wherever you can uh, in terms of rhythm. Um, rhythmically, there is no denoted length for it. In this case, it's going to be more of kind of a flavor thing. Um, and they sound really cool and they're really neat, but they are definitely, um, if you're not used to them, if you can very easily overlook them. And in some cases, in this case, not so much, but um, in some larger works, um, like orchestral or that kind of thing, when they have grace notes, they're not necessarily always meant to be played. Um, they can be left out if necessary. Um, not, it, it depends on what the situation is. In this case, definitely go ahead and play them. They add a lot of flavor and a lot of spice to what music is there. Um, but overall, yeah, definitely a thing. Um, and then uh, we have a new phrase, pui cantabile. Uh, so play it smoothly or with a singing kind of feel to it. And then the last two notes, we have something that I do not believe we've seen before. P-I-Z-Z, -Z, which stands for pizzicato, uh, which is actually plucking instead of arco, which is bowing. Um, so we've got a bunch of new fun stuff with this one. Instead of playing it to the beginning, um, instead of playing it through at the beginning, let's go ahead and work on the individual chunks so that we can see how everything works. Because if you're just kind of listening along and you're not familiar with the road marks, with the, the road signs, so to speak, it's going to be real hard to keep up with where we're going, what we're doing, and where we're going back to. So let's go ahead and start from the top. Um, put my pencil back on the thing. I had one of them that I didn't have marked. I apologize. So those are going to be eighths at full speed. Um, let's go ahead and take it a little bit slower to begin with. Uh, so first eight bars, nice, simple. Go ahead and listen the first time and then we'll play it together after that. simple. Those grace notes give it a lot of flavor, but they can be kind of quirky. So let's take a look at the second measure, just the measure with the grace notes. And we are literally playing a C. We're playing a C. Uh, we're jumping up an octave. That literally. However, on the second note, we have a grace note. So, That's the general idea with how this piece is put together. So let's go ahead and work on that. We'll go through each of the four measures with the grace notes, just so we can kind of work on that. Um, and then we'll work on putting the entire section together. So measure two, um, still nice slow tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Again, one, two, three. One more time for good luck. One, two, three. Okay, moving on to measure four. It's going to be a D, uh, a G, and then a G. So we're basically outlining the uh, the root chord for the for the words are so hard today. Uh, we are outlining the root chord for the measure, um, and that will be a D. So D, uh, grace note into G, and then G. So go ahead and join me. One, two, three. Ah, uh, apologize. Uh, that needs to be a down bow. So one, two, three. There we are. One more time. One, two, three. Ah, one more time. One, two, three. 
Okay, moving on to measure six. We'll be just like the first uh, chunk with a grace note that we practiced. Uh, a C, an octave C with a grace note, and then back down to the C. One, two, three. Okay. One more time. One, two, three. Okay. And then the last one is going to be just octave G's um, with a grace note on the second. One, two, three. Okay. Would you go ahead and join me? One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Okay, let's go ahead and do that first eight bar chunk. I was going to say eight note chunk and then realized that, that was the first measure. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and do measures one through eight. Take it uh, same kind of tempo, nice and slow, and then we can go from there. So, one and two and three and four. measure um, that F, uh, the, the fourth finger on the C, is going to be a sharp, so it's going to be extended four. So instead of it's because you only want that half step there for how everything's set, set up. Let's go ahead and play through that chunk one more time. Um, yeah, from beginning to measure eight. One and two and three and... section. Um, do, do, do measure 14. We do have a retard there. Keep that in mind. I do not have that circled on mine. I missed it a couple times. Um, keep that in mind. We are going to be using that as kind of a slowdown and with a pause and then right back into um, in measure 15, right back into the tempo that we're keeping with the ah tempo marking. That's actually what that means. Usually after a retard or an accelerando, um, you will see an a tempo marking, meaning back to the original tempo that you were holding. Um, other than that, we have another one of those octave C's um, right before the fine in measure 16. Other than that, it should be relatively straightforward. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and give this one a shot. We'll see how this go how this goes. So. Measure 9 through 16, keeping that same tempo. One, two, how we use that uh, retarded measure uh, 14 is kind of a slow down and a pause to reset back into measure 15. So let's go ahead and do that one more time and then we'll go from there. Uh, measure 9 through 16. 1 and 2 and 3 and... <laughs> Fine, the DCL fine, at the very end, we are going to be playing this entire first section up to measure 16 with zero repeats. So it'll be 1 through 8, repeated, 1 through 8, 9 through 16, then it'll be 17 through 24, 17 through 24, 25 through 32, 25 through 32, 1 through 16. And then you're good. 
learning the chunks really does help lay everything out. So, next section is going to be slightly different. Um, we've had staccato markings on the majority of our notes. Um, nice, short, scrubby. <laughs> different markings on the notes starting at measure 17. Um, I want to say Largo and that's not the right one. Uh, we'll have to look that back up. Anyway, these are supposed to be, um, I believe the Yiddish word is schmaltzy, um, but it's supposed to be... smooth, more of a brush stroke than like a dab or a peck. Um, and then we also have the Puy Cantabulate, so smoothly singing, um, kind of a feel to it. This one we are also going to be running into some tricky fingering in measure 20. This one's going to be a little rough because we are transitioning from 16ths, which at this speed... <laughs> relatively fast. Um, with that, let's go ahead and look at measure 21 and just play it a little bit slower and then we'll get that up to the speed, then we'll work the entire section. So, starting in measure 21, um, let's go ahead and take a look at that just note by note. We're not even going to deal with duration. have some um, accidentals in here that are changing in the midst of what we're playing, so keep that in mind. Um, accuracy and fingering is definitely a huge thing. Let's go ahead and try that again. Just note durations we're playing, everything is like a little more than eighth notes. We're, we're literally just changing all of the durations to the same thing so we can work on the fingerings. One, two, three, one more time and then we'll start working on the duration. So, one, two, three. to play it at half speed, which is a really handy trick when you're working on things that are a little bit faster. Just double the speed of everything. So 16th notes, 16th notes become eighth notes, eighth notes become quarter notes. Um, so we were at... Okay, so uh, we're going to be playing, yeah, uh, so one and two and... So one, and two, and three, and four. Ah, I was playing those without being slurred, my apologies. Bowing is important here. Um, <laughs> as I thoroughly just destroy the bowing. Um, so let's go ahead and try that one more time so that hopefully I can get it correct. Um, and we will go from there. Um, so everything doubles, or half speed, half speed. We're not playing fast, we're playing slower. Um, and then we'll try that again. One, and two, and. One more time. One, and two, and. Let's try that a little bit faster. One, and two, and. And a little bit faster. One, and two, and. One of the things that I noticed when I initially started playing, playing faster is not hard. Um, playing 
to a certain point, playing faster is not hard. Um, making the bow isn't terribly complex. When you start doing this, the left hand is where I start having trouble moving faster. Um, I can move my right hand since it's only doing the exact same motion very quickly. Making the left hand move as fast with good tonality, accurate pitches, and not just kind of like smearing through it, that's where the troubles lie. Um, so, at full speed, okay, um, so at full speed, uh, I'm going to play the measure beforehand just to get into it. One, two, three. One more time, just to hear what it sounds like. One, two, three. And we also have a decrescendo there. Keep that in mind. Usually when people play fast, they tend to crescendo because they're concentrating on playing the notes and the dynamic goes right out the window. Um, let's go ahead and try that a little bit slower. Da 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 So da 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 one two three four one two three Ah There we are. Um do that one more time. Da 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 one two three again one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, that should be pretty decent. Let's go ahead and move back to measure 17, and then we'll do 17 through 24, all in a run. Um, actually, let's take a look at measure 24 just real quick. This is going to be a repeating figure that we run into, kind of a descending or an ascending with a little bit of variation to it. Um, the rest of the 16th in this particular song, nowhere near as complicated as this particular section. We're not dealing with, um, we're not dealing with accidentals, we're not dealing with changing accidentals within a measure, none of that stuff. It's, it's all relatively straightforward. The fingering is easy, upfront, rather intuitive. So, let's take a look at measure 24 real quick. One, two, three. <laughs> literally that easy. One, two, three. Okay. One more time. One, two, three. Okay. And then let's go ahead and do that chunk of 17 to 24. One, two, three. different feel to this chunk. We have a fingering area that is kind of rough, especially with the speed involved. We have a decrescendo into a piano, and then we also have uh, slurred up bows that are also staccato to help differentiate. So instead of... It's... just to help uh, to differentiate those notes. So, um, let's go ahead and try that entire section one more time, and then we can go from there. 17 to 24. One, two, three. <laughs> Let's go ahead and look.
look at the 16th note sections. Uh, so measure 25, relatively simple, nice and fast, or nice and uh, not fast forward, um, straightforward. That's the word. That's the phrase I was looking for. Uh, so 25, go ahead and play it with me. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, we're, I'm just going to add the tag just because otherwise it doesn't resolve and it makes my brain hurt. So 25, first note into 26. One, two, three. Okay, again, one, two, three. Okay, measure 27 with first note of 28. One, two, three. Huh, sounds the same, doesn't it? Uh, 29 with... Uh, we're just going to do 29 by itself because then we've got rolling stuff. So measure 29. Uh, one, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Um, hitting that low, low string, especially in any sort of quick action, is kind of rough. Um, you need to make sure that your bow is rosined. You need to make sure that your string strings are relatively cleaned off so you can get a nice nice bite. Uh, there we are. Um, otherwise it'll tend to skip or it'll tend to scratch. Let's go ahead and play that one more time. Just measure 29. One, two, three. Measure 30. One, two, three. You see how, like, it, it when you're playing, it, it can get kind of funky. Let's go and do that one more time. One, two, three. And then uh, 31. One, two, three. Okay, let's go ahead and do that one more time. 31. One, two, three. And let's do 31 and 32. So last two measures. Um, it is going to be double up bow uh, on the last measure, or on the, the B of 31. And then the C of 32 are both ups. So that you can get your frog right up here so that you can play you can play those two pizzicato notes because the last two notes of this song are plucked pizzicato. Super awesome. I, I really like the um, the feel of being able to end that way. It's a lot of fun. Um, so let's go ahead and play those last two bars together. Um, we'll take it a little bit slower. Da, 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 da. So one, two, three, one more time. One, two, three. Okay, let's go ahead and play that uh, a little bit closer to speed. One, two, three. One more time. One, two, three. Ah, I got my Boeings backward there. Um, also, I think my pillow might have... Let's go ahead and play the 25 to the end. One, two, three. Okay, so now, 
would recommend going through on all of your repeat sign or all of your repeat markings, both the beginning and the ending of them. Um, going through and putting big old brackets so that you can uh, make sure that you know what's going on. I'll take a picture of mine um, so that we can send it or so that it can show on screen. Um, and so from that, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and start at the beginning. And then we'll play each chunk with the proper repeats and then paste everything together. Okay, so starting at the beginning. So it'll be measures one through eight with a repeat, one through eight again, and then we'll stop. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three. <laughs> Just the one time here. One, two, three. Okay. Measures seventeen through twenty four. We will play twice. One. to the end with repeat. One, two, three. the beginning and then we play measures one to the fine which is going to be at the end of measure 16 with no repeats when we go back up to the top so go ahead and join me for that one two three <laughs> also right before the end and you can give it a little bit more character on the second time through. So let's go ahead and put all of this together. Um, keep in mind, so it'll be one through eight repeated, one through eight, nine through 16, 17 through 24 repeated, 17 through 24, uh, 25 to the end, 25 to the end, back to the beginning, 
through to 16 with no repeats. So it's kind of a complicated roadmap, but let's go ahead and take it at the tempo that we had been taking it at, and then we can finish, and then we can get it up to finished tempo. So <clears throat> this is a little bit of music here. <clears throat> go ahead and join me. One, two, three. <laughs> chunk of music. I apologize, that was actually at tempo. Okay, so yeah, there we are. Um, that That is definitely a piece. That is, that is, a, that is a real piece. Um, that is solidly out of the beginning, I'm just learning how to play this instrument. That can definitely be used um, as a demonstration of not only the musical knowledge, how to actually get the right sounds out of this giant screech plank, uh, but also how a demonstration of your knowledge of the terms, of the markings, of the repeats, um, the different styles of making noise with this, uh, be it arco, be it pizzicato, we haven't gotten to caleno yet, but that's besides the point. Um, we have not terribly simple fingerings. We have um, accidentals changing on the fly. Um, we have staccato markings on the notes. We have grace notes. This this is a solid piece. Um, as you are as you are learning and as you are progressing, this this is a real one. Um, so go ahead, spend some time on this. Um, keep in mind the course or the the lessons are now in a course format. Everything's still free. Find the link in the description. Um, and uh, yeah, go ahead and get some practice in on this. This one's this one's solid. This one's a real one. So, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate, it, and uh, I will harass you all later.